That's right. Captain Eric Chetwin of Colonel Bailey's 2nd Massachusetts Regiment mustered and drilled his regiment on that very same location where on April 19, 1775, 164 Menden militia had gathered. Being warned about the shot heard round the world, <laughs> Menden's brave threw down their farm tools and rushed to the center of town. As part of a full day's revolutionary encampment and reenactment, sponsored by Menden's 350th Anniversary Committee, approximately 150 or so onlookers enjoyed the historical reenactment at Founders Park and the encampment at the town field across the way. This snippet of Menden's historical past portrays the significance of little old Menden's involvement with America's fight for liberty. Early on the morning of April 19, 1775, Menden residents reacted to the call, a call they had nervously anticipated. But were they ready? For months, the men had been preparing for battle. They mustered at one of the three Menden training fields used to prepare themselves. Founders Park was the training field closest to Middle Post Road. The Post Road was just up North Avenue, not more than 200 yards from the park. It was the most direct route to Roxbury and eventual chaos. Naturally, they chose Founders Park to prepare their weapons, perform last minute drills, and then file off to join other ragtag farmers engaging the Redcoats. Menden's militia in 1775 was made up of four companies. About a third of them were designated as Minutemen, ready to march on a minute's notice. Each soldier was equipped with a firearm, a bayonet, a pouch, a knapsack, and 30 rounds of ammunition. He received military training three times a week. Training fields were located at Colonel Calvin Smith's property, now Hood Plaza, a field off Gaskell Street, and of course the training field at Founders Park. The Menden soldiers were well prepared. The town supported the Revolutionary War with soldiers, finances, clothing, food, and military supplies. It had quartered prisoners of war and took in 30 Charlestown residents left homeless after their city was burned at the Battle of Bunker Hill. It was a post-road stopover for military units, including Nathan Hale and his troops who had breakfast at Amidon Tavern in January of 76. Yes, Menden's contributions had been significant. Last Saturday, June 24th, 2017, at 10.30 a.m., Menden's 350th Anniversary Committee and Menden Brothers of the Brush presented a Revolutionary War encampment and reenactment of the muster that occurred at Founders Park on that fateful morning in 1775. Colonel Bailey's 2nd Massachusetts Regiment arrived early and set up camp on the town field opposite Founders Park. The formal presentation began at 10.30 with an introductory welcome to the 150 or so attendees by Menden resident Ann Dudley, followed by the national anthem. Revolution period music was provided by Daniel Byer, drum, and Leah Whiting, flute. Their expertise was well received. John Trainer and Dick Grady, town historians, provided insight as to Menden's role in the revolution. After the formal presentation, a replica tea-stained 13-star American flag was presented to Jonathan Dudley, co-chair of the 350th Anniversary Committee. Quite the ruckus event stirred the crowd towards the end of the formal presentation when a member of Colonel Bailey's 2nd Massachusetts Regiment, who was posing as Ebenezer Dorr, 
one of the midnight riders sent out by Dr. Joseph Warren the night before on April 18, 1775, came charging out from Avedon Tavern, ran across Main Street to Founders Park, and warned Captain Chetland of the 2nd Massachusetts Regiment that the Minutemen should muster immediately and march off to Roxbury. Captain Chetwin quickly roused his regiment, who fired several musket volleys before they marched off to Middle Post Road. It was quite the scene as musket blast excited the onlookers. Lexington, sir! The water in Lexington! Lexington! The regulars! Quickly, lads! Men and men in! Form up! Fall in! Protect your We home. march immediately! Good morning, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to this reenactment of the muster. This is a great event sponsored by the 350th Committee. I want to introduce to you the chairman of the subcommittee, Ann Dudley, for a welcome. Well, good morning. It has become a better morning, I would have to say. The prayers were answered. On behalf of the Menden 350th anniversary, we welcome you to Founders Park, one of the most honored places in our town's history. It was here in the 1660s where Joseph White's saw pit was a place where logs were cut into planks for our forefathers' first houses. The first meeting house was built in 1668 right here where we are standing. This building was the center of life for the new frontier town where life was a daily struggle for survival. In the winter of 1676, the King Philip War left every structure in town ravaged by fire. A second meeting house was built here in 1680 as our town's courageous families recovered from charred ruins, returned to Menden, and rebuilt their farms. A third meeting house was also built here in 1690 to accommodate the town's growing population. It was on this land in the 1600s where our founding fathers found spiritual strength, worshiped God, and made laws to govern their lives. By 1736, people of Menden had a new meeting house. It was a different location in which to gather. Fourth meeting house opened at the north end of Old Cemetery, a few hundred yards down Main Street. As this site upon which we are standing no longer had a religious or governmental use, the local militia used it as one of the town's military training grounds. Across the street, Ichabod Amidon built an inn in 1745 to accommodate an increased need for lodging for the travelers of Middle Post Road. It is with this setting that historian John Trainer will enlighten us about what was taking place in Menden and in the colonies in the 1700s. We're privileged to have with us Colonel Bailey's 2nd Massachusetts Regiment to help demonstrate what took place here on April 19, 1775, one of the most important days in our nation's history. The modern Colonel Bailey 2nd Massachusetts Regiment was founded in 1974 and has been continually active up to present day. Regiment members range from children to adults, and the original members, they have also come from many walks of life. We are pleased and honored to have this group with us today. Now, if you would please look to our flag, for our national anthem, followed by a moment of silence for all of our fallen heroes.
silence. We're all a lot better. And now John Trainer will give us some more of Menden's history during this time period. Thank you again, folks. This is a special, special day, a special place. You're standing at Bounders Park. Just a wonderful experience. If you look all around, you'll see the signs. You'll see the things that uh, represent what happened here during throughout throughout the. Uh, the years of, of Menden. But there's a lot of there's a lot of history that we should go over and I, it took a, it took a while for me to cut this down to less than two hours but I've got it close to that now so uh, the chairs will be coming soon. I needed to find the shorter version. By the rude bridge that arched the flood their flag to April's breeze unfurled. Here once the embattled farmers stood and fired the shot heard round the world. Conquered him, Ralph Waldo Emerson. Ralph Waldo Emerson's words remind us that April 19th is Patriot's Day, a day that calls to mind Paul Revere's ride the Old North Church and the battles of Lexington and Concord. The town surrounding Boston in 1775 had been eagerly preparing to avenge the Acts of Parliament that had closed the port of Boston and shut down Massachusetts state government and placed it under British rule. General Thomas Gage became the new governor. One of his rules was that no towns could conduct town meetings without his permission. In the spirit of rebellion, the towns brazenly defied General Gage. They replaced the dissolved legislature with a provincial Congress and communicated freely through committees of correspondence. Town meetings were held in many towns in outright defiance. One of those towns, 30 miles southwest of Boston, had leaders who were closely acquainted with the leaders of the Sons of Liberty, Menden's own Sons of Liberty. The cries for freedom from tyranny that came from Boston and Faneuil Hall were echoed at town meetings in this small patriotic farming town that clamored for independence. It was our town. The people of Menden were active participants in the events leading up to the American Revolution. On March 1st, 73, voters supported and endorsed 19 resolutions from a letter from the Sons of Liberty denouncing the injustices of Great Britain for denying them their rights and liberties. They formed a committee of correspondence by town meeting vote in 74 in order to share ideas with other towns. Menden elected Joseph Dorr to represent Menden at a meeting of the Provincial Congress in Concord. The Congress authorized towns to increase their stock of weapons, ammunition, and military supplies. Menden patriotically obliged. In reference to that, we of course had a Menden Munitions Depot down on Providence Street, remnants of which still exist. Menden's militia in 1775 was made up of four companies that included 164 men. About a third of them were designated as Minutemen ready to march on a minute's notice. A third, the young, energetic, vibrant ones, the old timers, were just the Menden militia. Each soldier was equipped with a firearm, a bayonet, a pouch, a knapsack, and 30 rounds of ammunition. He received military training three times a week. Training fields were located at Colonel Calvin Smith property, Hood Plaza, in a field off of Gaskell Street, in this training area right here at Founders Park. The soldiers, the Menden militia, were well prepared for combat. 
On April 15, 1775, the Provincial Congress became aware that General Gage was preparing to send British soldiers to Lexington to arrest the ringleaders Sam Adams and John Hancock, and then move on to destroy ammunition supplies allegedly hidden in Concord. It was voted to secretly re relocate the ammunition in nine remote towns, one of them being Menden, of course. In response to the shot heard around the world, Menden soldiers mustered right here at Founders Park and marched on to Boston by way of Middle Post Road. Middle Post Road, which is just beyond the stone wall beyond that field, and was the, 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 the first highway in North America. The town supported the Revolutionary War with soldiers, finances, clothing, food, and military supplies. It quartered prisoners of war and took in 30 Charlestown residents left homeless after their city was burned at the Battle of Bunker Hill. A lot of those Charlestown residents certainly quartered at Amidon Tavern. It was a post-road stopover for military units, including Nathan Hale and his troops, who had breakfast at Amidon Tavern in January of 76. The most famous soldier to be born in Menden was Alexander Scammell, who was born in 1744 near the site of Crossroads, the Larches, off William Street, now Milford. At Valley Forge, he was named by George Washington to, the, to be the Continental Army's Adjutant General. He was mortally wounded at Yorktown in 1781. Menden's contributions had been significant. Patriots Day is usually celebrated with the Boston Marathon, a Red Sox game at Fenway, and perhaps a day off from work. Reflecting on that eventful night of April 18, 1775, Dr. Joseph Warren rallied the Sons of Liberty and sent out his midnight riders to warn the countryside that 700 redcoats would be marching to Lexington to carry out their plan. Paul Revere and William Dawes went on the northerly route from Charlestown, Medford, Somerville, and Arlington, and then on to Lexington. Another lesser known midnight rider, Ebenezer Dorr, first cousin to Menden's own son of liberty, Joseph Dorr, ventured out on a southwesterly direction. He raced out of Boston using the Dedham Turnpike to Menden and the Middle Post Road. Likely, it was Ebenezer Dorr who brought the news to Menden and to Amidon Inn. He was a cousin of Menden's patriot leader, Joseph Dorr. Ebenezer Dorr.
So that's how fast they can reload and turn into training. It's very important because all the time that you're standing there in range watching the enemy, they're firing at you. And they march closer and they fire at you. And they march closer and they fire at you. Yeah, the more you get, the more chance you get. Well, since we're not actually saying that, These have uh, properties that we use today in tea and, and such for um, certain uh, 
purposes. Uh, the turmeric, which is what I have here, is one that was used as medicine back then and in fact is still used today. What I'm wearing is a, a gown that was made from the English gown pattern. Um, you'll notice. And put the ramrod away. And this part here shoulder the weapon. is the outer Everybody piece of my shoulder, jacket. I know the weapon's ready all the to gowns, go. the jacket of the gown. So this here is all one piece. And then this piece here is separate. It's called the bodice. I mean the stomacher. And the reason why you would have your jacket separate from your stomacher is that you would be able to accommodate all kinds of different sizes of bodies and all kinds of different months of pregnancy and be able to maybe be passed down from mother to daughter and just share it around when necessary because fabric is so here. And so, of course, over that I've got my apron which goes around and ties in the back. A lot of times you'll see when you wear aprons kind of tucked up like this in a little pouch. You can carry things and just kind of have it tucked out of the way. And there are many, many layers underneath my um, gown. So I've got my first petticoat in my gown here. And then under that, I've got two other petticoats as well. And under that, I've also got my shift. And this is basically all you've got for your underwear. It's a, sort of just like a short dress, like a light linen dress. And it goes down to just below my knees. And um, I've got my stays. And you know, if you can hear that, but you can actually hear not on the stays because they just that stiff they keep the body that stiff and sort of in a clean shape nowadays we would like to think of an hourglass but back then they like to all right everybody and let's see stockings i've got my stockings here and i think that's pretty much all i can tell you about my, oh my cat yes. um so this is a cat that i've made everything in my outfit Shift I bought. Excellent. Um, but Everybody, the cat made, here are your also. weapons. Um, so the barrel is down. Put it in there. And we've always got that little ribbon to add a dash of color. It's not really sure very utilitarian, but out. it does add a dash of color. And um, the back up to the shoulder. that's pretty much it. Allison has got the bonnet on top of the cat. <laughs> and, now, and, uh, unfortunately. So. I also wear a hat like this, a straw hat that would uh, protect your, you from the sun. Um, there's a number of bonnets, different bonnets that you can wear. We'd make these ourselves as well. Um, sometimes they'd be heavily decorated and sometimes not. And sometimes we would just be in the cap. We would always wear the cap, at least, every time we went out. And you can see I have one underneath as well. Despite intermittent rain showers, onlookers fully enjoyed this long-awaited event. From the muster reenactment to the afternoon encampment activities, there was plenty of history to experience. Especially rewarding was the excitement from the children who loved the loud musket volleys. They also loved the learning of rudimentary colonial living and musket handling. Thank you to the 350th Anniversary Committee, Colonel Bailey's 2nd Massachusetts Regiment, Dan and Leah, and Ann, Dick, and John. Events like this muster reenactment ensure the continued appreciation for Menden's historical past.